Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I want to focus on the area above the beach, which is the boardwalk, and getting in the next modular as well. But first, a very important announcement. Now before we get started with today's activity, I have an announcement to make. I have successfully managed to get Fast Food Corner, my first modular mock, onto the LEGO Ideas website. Uh, if you don't know what the LEGO Ideas website is, is a website run by LEGO themselves uh, to take people's ideas from around the world. And if they get enough support from ordinary people like you, then uh, they may get made into a real set. And there's been quite a few successful sets made over the years uh, by this method. The most recent one being Barracuda Bay, the wonderful pirate ship that sort of turns into a shipwrecked pirate uh, enclave, I suppose you'd call it. And um, other good ones include the uh, old fishing store, which is kind of just hidden at the moment behind here. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to see this built into a real life set or might want to actually own it yourselves, then your vote would be very much appreciated. The uh, first hurdle of 100 votes has already been hit. In fact, we're already up to about 500 votes. Uh, the second hurdle is 1,000 votes, which gives you a time extension. And the ultimate target is 10,000 votes. Now, given uh, we've got between 7 and 8,000 subscribers on this channel as I speak, it should be quite easy to get the lion's share of that if everyone is up for it. So it only takes a couple of minutes. You do have to register, but I can speak from experience. They don't bombard you with loads of mail uh, and you can definitely unsubscribe from whatever they do send you. Uh, but it will take you two minutes to uh, sign up and then one click of the button to uh, support this idea. And I would be eternally grateful if you would. So uh, the link is in the description for this video and will be in future videos for quite a while. Just to be considered would be a real achievement and one that you can witness all of the uh, process that went into building uh, this set on the channel if you haven't already. There's a dedicated playlist for just uh, this called Modular Mondays and uh, you can see this literally from the ground up. Right, on to today's video. First, I better put the bookstore back. Now, from that important news, I just wanted to show you that I've started processing some of the tread plate stickers. I've also processed this flag to make it double sided. Get two ones with a sticker on one side, and using your patented hot tea technique, you move one onto the other side. And there was a number plate that I needed on the back of this car to make it have the same number plate front and back. And another one was the spoiler for this turbo racer. That looks miles better now, doesn't it? That looks really good. That one like that a lot. Now from the back of fast food corner over the railway lines is the area we're going to be working on today. And um, the first thing I need to do really is to build the third platform for what will be the station with the middle one obviously between the two tracks and the main station building and the uh, far from our perspective uh, platform, platform number one over there. Uh, and the reason why I need to build this one in place is because it's kind of going to interact with the back of this run of modulars and I need to get it sort of sorted uh, behind all three of them before I can really uh, put them firmly into place and tile them in. So what I'm going to do is start building just the infrastructure for platform uh, number four, because two and three are in the middle, uh, along here, and then see how it's going to interact with the two already in play. Now, one of the main things I want to do, lovely garden that, isn't it, um, is have a link from that platform number four on this side directly to our wonderful boardwalk and then beach area. And um, somebody suggested that I build a uh, alley sort of in between two of the modulars because I've got a little bit of room with that uh, eight wide base plate there. But the thing is, even better than that, what's this? 
Yeah. In the detective's office set, there is already an alley in between the pool hall, the Highlander, and uh, Al's barbers that goes all the way through. So when I build that platform number four, what I really want to do is link it to this passageway with a card reader and so on for people who want to activate their tickets and what have you, uh, and have it so people can gain access from this side uh, of things rather than having to go all the way along and over the normal pedestrian crossing. So I think that would be a really good touch as well. I mean, it's not much of a space saving, but um, I like the idea. And given that we've already got this alleyway, well, it'd be silly not to really, wouldn't it? Right, so I'm going to start building the uh, normal platform. And then I'm going to start building a kind of a bridge from that platform level, which is going to be quite high because it's three bricks uh, from this level, which means it's four bricks high from the lower level here. So, um, yeah, there's going to need to be quite a bridge to sort of match up with this hole on the back. Right, so the next step is really hard to show you, actually, given that it's hidden right behind these uh, modulars. I've taken off all the higher floors, obviously, and one more change I've done is actually turned this back door uh, back to front, so it actually opens inwards now because there definitely wouldn't be enough room for it to open outwards afterwards. I mean, it's a minor factor, but, um, you know, may as well do it while we're here. Uh, and the other thing is that a comment has already said, you know, there's really not much space back here. It's not very realistic. And perhaps that's true, but I'd rather have it very crammed and a bit uh, over intensive here than leave some broad strip that ends up being completely unused. Uh, as many of you will know, I go for as much density as I possibly can in my city. So uh, this is just another case of that. Right, so we've got the back wall on, which is four bricks high, and we've got the front wall on, which is three bricks high, because it's on that slightly higher uh, table level. And you can see the backs of those yellow bricks that we're using on the sides of the uh, platforms, and probably can't see, but the middle bands, these profile bricks. Can you hear that? That's profile brick. Uh, so then that just means that I can put on the platform on top of that level. I won't push down now because you tend to get bad results when you push down things whilst leaning uh, around a camera. But you get the idea, and then the platform will continue along like that. Uh, and then the platform will kind of have a back wall on it to keep one thing from the other. But um, I do appreciate that they're incredibly close. I mean, the stairs up from this platform here will be almost touching the stairs up to the uh, gym above the diner. But, um, you know, hey-ho, I like it dense, so that's fine. Uh, now, while I'm at this stage, I think I'll consider a bit further what I'm doing uh, with this back wall and the platform level to marry up with the steps, because obviously it will be a lot higher than the steps, but essentially I can have a couple of steps down from this level to the level uh, in between the buildings. Uh, and then... <sighs> So we can still get by underneath. I guess I'm going to need to have some arches. So I think I'll use some arch pieces kind of that way. Uh, and that will mean that people can go underneath the arch and then people can go from the platform over the arch and then down some steps into this central passageway, which obviously gives uh, access to the detective's office itself as well. Okay, so here's an interesting angle. Uh, here's the black platform bricks, and I've left a 1x4 gap in the top rung of that. Here's obviously the platform uh, surface itself and the alley we're trying to uh, marry up with. So the first thing I've done is created this little construct made of four 1x6x1 arches in black and a few more other bricks that just mean that I can marry one side of this up with the other. Now that does mean there's a little sort of uh, underpass underneath that for minifigures to use. Now it's very low, 
uh, given it's what going to be just under four bricks high. So they would have to stoop underneath that. But I think at least it's better than nothing. Uh, so there's going to be uh, one step here, one step there, and then a gap at the moment before the uh, passageway. So I need to just put in one more uh, step there. There we go. Right, so that's filled in. No trip hazards there. Then just to make it look a bit more neat, I'm going to put in some bricks and an inverted slope on this edge, and that will sort of tidy up the join between the building and this arch. And then a bit of extra deep platform. Right, so that seems to be secure. Now, uh, if you remember, we said we were going to tile this, or rather there was a question whether we were going to tile this, and I think tiling it definitely won from the tile trial. So uh, if this is going to have one level of tiles on it, it does mean that I've got the ability to put some tread plates, yay, tread plates, on my steps. So golly, this is going to be very fiddly to do. One, two and ugh, left handed fantastic three so uh normal tiles will sort of uh build up to that and then we'll have a, a low wall uh, along these sides so wow that is really good that is now linking up the detective office uh passageway with our station very happy with that indeed Right, let's have a look from the front. And here's exactly the same thing, but from uh, a slightly different view. Here are the original steps that came with the set for the passageway. The passageway bottom and the stairs that would go up to the detective's office. And then we've got our three new steps, equidistant up onto the new platform level. So I think that looks pretty, uh, hmm. Seamless. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, right, so I think now we've got enough done behind these modulars uh, to enable us to put in the third modular of this little row, or the fourth if you include the uh, Palace Cinema, uh, and uh, then we can finish the platform behind that one as well. But which will it be? So, which modular will it be? Well, it's the Parisian restaurant, set 10243. Now, I really like this set. I think it's uh, one of the best modulars that uh, Lego have ever made. Now, I appreciate it. it's another different architecture style from the uh, Art Deco that is the diner and then the kind of brick built and uh, more modern buildings that are next to it. But I thought a really nice uh, restaurant might be near the beach, might be a kind of a Michelin starred sort of place that uh, got fresh seafood uh, from the uh, fishing shop and all the rest of it. So um, I thought that would be a good addition. Another reason for doing it is the fact that it has got this kind of natural end with the veranda going around this outside. So that veranda will be very viewable from the door to the Lego room, which is the main viewing angle. Uh, and it also has a little bit of a step down before we get to this area over here that's going to be good fun as well. And quite frankly, I need to put it somewhere uh, and it's not going to be any better anywhere else. Now, I've only made two changes to the original set. And I say changes, they're not really changes at all. What I've done is added the uh, Series 9 uh, waiter just to uh, run the outside area because he looks rather fantastic with his uh, bow tie and his little moustache and his fantastic bottle of wine. Uh, and then the other change I've made is in the artist studio that's in the roof, I've put in the uh, Series 4 artist, unsurprisingly. Uh, but he's a bit locked away in there and it obviously is quite hard to see him when that's all done up as a solid roof. So uh, I might actually let him out uh, to do some painting al fresco. There's a closer look at the veranda, including a waiter. Obviously, I need a lot more customers, both uh, up here and on the tables out front. In fact, 
that criticism could be made of the entire boardwalk at the moment. Uh, it's not fully populated. I haven't even paved it yet, so uh, not to worry. But I do like the location of this building here. So I have liberated the uh, artist from his attic space. Seemed a shame to keep him in there on such a hot day. And he's got his smock, his beret, his brush and palette, and his easel. This isn't necessarily the final place for him, but um, it'll do for now, just so I don't forget and leave him <laughs> locked away. And there's the wonderful Chez Albert restaurant sign and menu. And this building is a very different architecture from its neighbours. But I don't mind that. It's no different from, say, how different a diner is from uh, its neighbour. And why not have a cheaper restaurant on one end of the strip and a much more elegant restaurant on the other? And it's not the oldest building in the area because that's probably the uh, bait shop down here, which looks very old indeed and a bit ramshackle as a result. But um, yeah, there's lots of colours and different shapes in that. So I'm very happy with it, especially with the end being open like that. I think it naturally wants to go on the end of a row of modulars. Right, so back to today. We've got to finish this platform. So uh, that's how much we've done so far. So we have to extend this onto the base plate that is the Parisian uh, and then finish the top. And then maybe we can put the back wall on it or maybe even some of the tiles and details that will be on there. But you can start to get an idea of how big this station is going to be. Good, good. Right, so there's the entire platform length done. And we've got a nice little yard actually here with the door for the Parisian is sort of round this corner. Uh, and then there's a nice little yard with a few bins and a few climbing plants. So uh, yeah, it's working out quite well on this one. Right, so I've swapped sides because that was becoming increasingly difficult to uh, reach over all of the modulars. But uh, you can see it now. This is the platform with a nice platform edge. So it's looking good. Uh, these two one by sixes are to hold up the stairs. And I've just put a very low wall in because I don't want to overshadow the backs of the modulars. Uh, and I've put in one of those uh, map pieces we saw last time and some lighting. One, two, three. Good, good. And a little bit further on, you can see I've tiled a little bit so we can see the link between the platform level and that top step and actually peer all the way down through that passageway to the boardwalk itself. Uh, obviously, I'll be continuing that grey and red wall along that uh, left side as well. And um, I haven't forgotten the uh, light bluish grey grill piece. It's just I've uh, run out of those at the moment. So that's another thing I'm going to need to do quite urgently on a brick hall. And, and I think the back of all these buildings actually looks like the sort of typical view that you would see from uh, a railway line. Usually you see these sort of unloved back of buildings and they're all sort of jumbled together. And that's what we've got here with the uh, olive green and the dark blue and the light blue and the brown and the nougat. So it's, it's the sort of jumble that I'd expect to see. So I like that very much. Uh, and another thing I need to add, because I know you'll spot it because you've all got eagle eyes, is another card reader. Uh, and that's so people can tap in and tap out when they enter the station from this different direction to uh, gain access to the trains. And um, it makes me more glad I didn't add the turnstile on the station side now because had I actually had a physical turnstile, I'd need to be putting them in here and in between the tram line and the train line and all sorts of places. And uh, well, it would have been a bit too turnstile for my liking. Good, right, so I'm going to continue this wall from here uh, along to here. Uh, and I think you'll agree, though, it's sort of a seamless link now between um, this row of modulars and the station. I mean, obviously, I'll never be able to move these around like some people like to do in their city, sort of change the order of the buildings because everything will be very firmly stuck together. But, um, you know, I'd rather make a good choice once than uh, keep varying things, to be honest. 
And there's the wall continued on all along the other side with another map to see where you are in the system. And two more lights as well. Yep, liking that. And now we're at this slightly lower angle. You can actually see really, really well all the way through to the boardwalk. So I really do like that. I really hadn't planned to have this uh, connection to the uh, station at all. I thought it'd just be a passageway to the yards or something like that. But um, now it couldn't be better, really, could it? Fantastic. So what I think I will do is add a sign, though, here uh, to the beach so um, people know what that exit is. And I already used one of these stickers, the one up here saying Paradisa Beach, but I do have two sticker packs, thank goodness. So I'm going to use that sticker uh, and it's got a right pointing arrow. So I guess it will be about here to point down this passage. Right, so let's put that in. Take a too long bit of wall out and put a bracket piece in. And then we can add our sign. Hey, hey, I think that looks good. Brilliant. And I think we should try and do the same thing from the other side as well. And there's a station uh, sticker there as well. Uh, because what's the use of having a passageway to the station if it's not uh, adequately signed? So I'm going to probably stick that on a 2 by 4 white tile rather than a black one because I'm not greatly impressed with these stickers. They aren't the best quality. And if I put it on a uh, black tile, it's going to be quite faint. Uh, so I'm going to try it on a white one and see if that's any better. So that worked and the sticker actually looks great on a white background. Very vivid indeed, so I think that's a lesson learnt for those stickers. If in doubt, use a white background. Uh, and I think the only place to actually mount this, if I just move this back temporarily, is over this arch. And it will mean that the uh, top floor is actually attached by a couple more studs, but I think that's probably unavoidable unless we want to take out this whole arch. So I'm thinking that that, oh yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Will be the best uh, course of action. So let's try and, oh, oh no, it's starting to separate. <laughs> let's try and move this back. So there we go. So it's quite subtle. I've just blocked it from the angle we're looking at. But um, you can see it if you lean down. Uh, maybe it'd be better off, actually, thinking about it, just lowering it down onto the bottom two studs of that. Um, yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Lowering it onto the bottom two studs of that um, bracket and then putting something else on the top two just to cover them up. Yeah, well, that's very bright, isn't it? So there's an even lower down angle for you to see. And I've just covered up the two studs with a one by two tile in light bluish grey. Yeah, I think that looks really good. It really makes the uh, alleyway actually have a point now, apart from to get to the uh, detective's office, of course. It was always useful for that. Great. Now I think it's time to put some people into the boardwalk and finish off the tiling as well. Cool. Now just above our wonderful beach party is our artist in his new temporary position. <laughs> Fish and chip shop with the uh, seagull attack. But I've also added this life ring in the colors of uh, Lego's Coast Guard. And I think that looks pretty good facing out away from the chain fence towards the pavement. I'll have to pave all this in, of course. And then down, down, down the beach. I've got another one behind the shrimp shack and a third one just here above the beach huts and that's where I figure everyone will be getting their ice cream so I've got the ice cream uh, kind of what would it be tricycle or cart or whatever you might call it from the funfair people pack from set uh, 60234 
I think that's quite an interesting use of the uh, piece there for the ice cream scoop. And she's uh, got a big stack of cornets and some lollies in the cooler. And this girl's been buying an ice cream for her brother who's gone for chocolate, like all legends do. That's what I'd go for. Uh, and she's going for strawberry. Big mistake. But that's very good there, so people can uh, be buying ice creams and refreshments for the beach up there, just up the uh, steps. Now, I've thought long and hard about what to do with the boardwalk, and the idea I like most is to do a load of street entertainers. So with that in mind, I've done a whole row of them. We've got the uh, Series 8 actor, who's clearly doing a rendition of Hamlet at the moment. It's a very high brow area, this very well educated uh, public. And next, very fittingly, next to the uh, French restaurant Chez Albert, is uh, the series to mime. And goodness knows what he's miming there, maybe slipping on a floor or something like that, but he seems to be enjoying himself. Uh, yep. And then we've got uh, the jester from series 12. He's no doubt doing something really funny with those cards. Uh, and then next to him, we've got William Shakespeare from the uh, Lego movie uh, set of minifigures. So uh, he'll probably be doing something to contrast with the uh, rendition of Hamlet, I suppose. Alas, poor Yorick and all that. And he'll be doing a comedy, no doubt, like maybe Much Ado About Nothing. That's probably my favourite. And then next, we've got Lady Liberty from uh, Series 6. Now, I figured that she, rather than being a statue, would be one of those people who um, sort of paint their skin with makeup and wear the clothes of things like a statue and then be absolutely motionless, uh, apart from maybe now and then where they try and shock somebody, uh, to, uh, well, be like a human statue, essentially. So hopefully that does look like somebody being a human statue rather than just somebody uh, just <laughs> putting a statue in an odd place. Then we've got the Series 1 Magician, who I like very much with that lovely moustache, magic wand, a handful of cards, and I've added a rabbit for good measure that he's obviously plucked out of thin air. And then last but not least, we've got the Series 9 Roman Emperor, and he's probably giving a oratory speech of friends, Romans and countrymen, or something like that. So yeah, as I say, it is a very uh, highbrow area, clearly, with uh, three different sort of classical street entertainers, but nonetheless, I think that that is quite a good scene. And I've uh, deliberately used these people because they're quite hard to use in other situations so it's actually quite a good use of them also i think having uh, all these plinths that they're standing on to do their performing should make them very visible to the crowds and they also break up this very long and straight sort of driveway by sticking out into it and i've added a lot of jumper plates both in between them and on the other side, especially opposite the magician, because I thought he might be the most popular, uh, to add loads of members of the public who are watching them whilst enjoying their food from the diner and so on. And um, I haven't put them on yet, just so you can see the scene and uh, see them a lot more clearly. But I do like those. Hopefully that looks entertaining and not too regular because of the spacing, I don't know. Clearly, it's very highbrow, like I say. And that brings us on to the vehicle of the day, actually, at the end here. I still haven't forgotten. This is the Red Tractor, set 7634 from 2009. And I do actually plan to have a farm right in one of the far corners of the room in due course. I mean, it's a long way away from the centre. And there's no reason why he couldn't have come in from there on his very slow but good-looking tractor holding up traffic. That's what they usually do, isn't it? 
Good. So, you'll have to let me know what you think about this now complete row of modulars. with three there, side by side, and the boardwalk in between, that will have ultimately as many people on it as the beach. A good two dozen or so, I think. Uh, and then it will really tie the whole area together, I think. We still have to do the uh, area up here, and I haven't focused on finishing the edge of that or anything, because I don't know exactly what shape I want it. I might build it sort of a bit higher towards that wall on the left as well. I don't know. So um, that's still a secret activity. Maybe you'd like to have a guess, I don't know. But I think all these colours and people and shapes and stuff just make this whole scene look just fantastic, doesn't it? Very vivid indeed. Great. And then we've also got, um, obviously, our platform over to the other side, of the, through the passage, onto that platform, where we'll also have the second platform and ultimately the station on Monday in our next edition. Well, before we end today, I do want to remind you about the Lego Ideas website and my application to have Fast Food Corner considered as a real-life Lego set. And as I said earlier, it only needs 10,000 votes, and we're already over 500. So uh, if you could take the five minutes it takes to register and click on that support button by searching for Fast Food Corner, then uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I mean, if everyone who watched this video went ahead and did it, we would have a qualified uh, application in a matter of days. So thank you very much in advance for that. So I'm afraid that's all I've got time for. We have run out of time again. It never seems to last that long, does it? But I'm really happy with the progress we've made. The uh, third modular looks fantastic, in my opinion. Uh, these performers look really great and really colourful, spicing up the whole area. But I think the best thing has been doing this passageway, because uh, it wasn't planned at all, and it just connects two uh, different areas of the city in such a great way that could have easily been missed. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So... As always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, as I say, we'll be continuing with the train station by placing it in Brick Nottingham. Fantastic. See you then.